organelles. Uh, we have uh, different uh, hormone receptor sites. And, you know, every, every day our, our bodies are in constant battle against bacteria, viruses, infections, disease. And so are we winning the war or are we losing the war? And, and what we want to do is we want to set ourselves up. We want to set our health up to win the war, right? We, we don't want to lose the battle and uh, nobody wants to lose, right? And so we want to make sure that we set up. And one of the ways of doing that is having proper nutrition, optimizing your nutrition, not just the recommended daily amounts, uh, but optimal nutrition, what your body needs to run on all eight cylinders uh, to run at its best potential. And so we have vitamin E that's a strong antioxidant, fat soluble. It, it lies, it likes to lie in that, that lipid bilayer, the cell wall, the cell membrane. And so it sits in there and it offers a lot of, of protection against oxidation and breaking down that, that cell wall. Uh, and, and so free radicals can get in. So the vitamin E likes to lay in there. Uh, you got vitamin C, which is water loving, uh, hydrophilic. And so uh, it uh, will sit in the extracellular or the intracellular uh, membranes. And then you have the, nope, sorry. And then you have the carotenoids, uh, the, the bright colors, which give uh, fruits and vegetables, their reds, their oranges, uh, their yellows, their deep purples, and even, even green. Uh, there's a lot of carotenoids in green leafy vegetables, but the chlorophyll blocks the color uh, from the carotenoids. So that's why that, uh, the, the green uh, overpowers the carotenoid color. But you know, green leafy vegetables have a lot of carotenoids specifically beta carotene, lutein, lycopene. Um, we all know, you know, uh, the daily, uh, the daily consumption for most humans, they get their vegetables when they have, you know, uh, French fries and ketchup. Uh, you know, that, that's the American way of having the vegetables for the day. But, um, you know, the, the, the carotenoids uh, also lie in that phospholipid bilayer. Uh, and what they do is they offer protection uh, for, for that oxidation. And the carotenoids you only can get from fruits and vegetables. The, your body does not manufacture uh, this most powerful antioxidant, uh, largest family of antioxidants. It doesn't uh, manufacture it on its own. So you have to acquire it from your diet. And that's why fruits and vegetables are important. So what's the solution? Uh, well, the biophotonic scanner was developed at the University of Utah. It was uh, funded by the NIH uh, through grants for macular degeneration, uh, cancer research, and many other applications. We saw the value of it, so we purchased all the licensing and the tech transfer. And it was the size of an MRI machine. That's why we provided that little joke. And then um, we got it down to this size. This is the third or fourth. This is the third generation. Uh, fourth, if you count the MRI uh, machine one, but this is the third generation. And we will be having a fourth one coming out pretty soon. Uh, that uh, what I hear is going to be more personalized to people than, than, than general. Uh, and so this is a, a accurate, quick test. Uh, it's 30 seconds, it's non-invasive, it's more accurate than a blood test. And it's going to give you uh, an accurate score of a person's antioxidants, carotenoid level, uh, oxidative stress, inflammation. Uh, and so you can do further tests if you want, but this will give you an idea of what's going on with the patient. So it's portable, it runs on Bluetooth. Uh, and we know that uh, about 94% of your patients uh, or patients in general will fail the test just because they have a poor diet and or they're not absorbing what they're eating. Uh, but we know that we have, based on uh, clinical applications that we have, and I'll share with you later, we have a 99% improvement rate. So we can increase that carotenoid and antioxidant score, and it can be measured, uh, and you can uh, show your patients what that looks like. So it's based on Raman spectroscopy, which is Nobel Prize winning science. It's relevant science today. In fact, NASA has a Raman spectroscopy probe on the rover on Mars, uh, where it's searching for past life. 
past organic material on Mars. Uh, and what's interesting is now Apple's trying to put this technology in their watches. Uh, we've been doing it for 17 years, and now it's uh, interesting to, to see a large company like Apple uh, trying to measure blood glucose levels, uh, blood alcohol levels through the skin, uh, like they they don't have enough information on us, right? They want to they want to find out how much we've been drinking uh, at happy hour. So we we make it nice and easy. You know, uh, numbers don't really matter to a patient. In fact, it's very confusing confusing. But these are all Gallagher units, and I can talk about that if you're more interested. But you know, low is bad, high is good. We give a grade. Um, ideally, you want to be in the blue, 50,000 greater, that would be an A, and the green is a B, yellow is a C, D score is an orange, and then an F uh, is in the red. So most of your patients will score in the orange and red, you find diabetics, smokers, cancer survivors will be in the red. Uh, average sad American diet, a lot of macronutrients will be in the orange. And, you know, people that uh, eat more fruits and vegetables, take supplements will be in the green. Uh, anybody in the, in the gray here, you want to call 911. That is a health emergency. Uh, they are eating really good, uh, almost too good. And, uh, you know, that's a unicorn and you should capture that so you could study it. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, the higher, the better. A lot of people that juice or vegans, uh, they'll be in the blue. Uh, or in the platinum area. So let's look at some research. So this was a study uh, sent out in March 9th of this year done at Harvard University. And it concluded that eating more fruits and vegetables at least five servings per day was associated with reduced mortality. So if you ate more fruit, if you eat more fruits and vegetables, you will live longer. And uh, you know, five might not be enough. It's actually 10 to 12. But uh, five's a good start, I think you would agree, for most people. Um, happy finger with the trigger here. Anyway, let's look at another one here with COVID-19 and mitigating with nutrition. Uh, we've seen these vitamins before, minerals like uh, vitamin C, vitamin D, uh, and zinc. Um, uh, we've seen this before, but this was an interesting study. You know, uh, what was interesting is, you know, back in March, you couldn't find any of these uh, supplements on the shelves anywhere. Uh, it tells you that your patients are being proactive uh, about their health. Uh, they're educating themselves even more so than, you know, 10, 20 years ago. And so, you know, I think me and my wife bought the last bottle of zinc at, at Whole Foods. I mean, we couldn't find zinc anywhere. Uh, and so, you know, there is, uh, there is some truth to this. And like I said, we're not trying to say we're curing anything here, curing COVID, but um, if we can help mitigate, uh, that's what we want to try to do. So this study was interesting, uh, strengthening the immune system and reducing inflammation and oxidative stress through diet and nutrition considerations during the COVID-19 crisis. So this was um, published uh, May of last year. And if we take a look at one of the tables, uh, the constituents that they used in the study were proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, and fiber. Well, let's take a look at vitamin A, which is a strong carotenoid. So that was in the study. And if we look at the second page here with the table, vitamin D, vitamin E, C, B complex, zinc, iron, selenium, polyphenols, and there's that magic word again, carotenoids. Interesting. So we're going to come back to the study. I'm going to go away from it for a short bit here. Uh, so there is a solution, right? Um, most people aren't getting 10 to 12 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. It's impossible. It's, it's almost unsustainable. Uh, you will have people, you will have those uh, rare unicorns out there that uh, will be able to do that. But for most people that work, you know, or have a family, they're just not getting enough fruits and vegetables. And if they are, they're probably not absorbing it. Um, LifePack was developed way before we acquired the scanner, almost 10 years before. Uh, so it's kind of like the chicken before the egg. And it was based on optimal nutrition. Uh, nobody was getting, nobody's getting optimal nutrition. Uh, and, and so uh, the founders of PharmaNext wanted to 
to give optimal nutrition to people because they saw a correlation with preventing disease. And so it's seven formulas in one. It's actually also an eye formula and a brain formula, along with these other uh, areas that it covers. It's a full body formula. Uh, it's taken twice a day and it will replace all those individual bottles that you have in your cabinet. Uh, but it's the only product that's validated to increase antioxidant levels. And we have uh, clinical double blind placebo studies uh, to prove this. So LifePack has a multi-mineral, multivitamin, and 40 plus antioxidants. And what's interesting is that it contains vitamin E, obviously, but most formulas only contain uh, two isomers or four isomers. Uh, there's a total of eight isomers for vitamin E. And if you don't have all eight isomers, your body just passes the vitamin E right through uh, and it doesn't process it the way it needs to. So you need all eight forms of vitamin E, and that's the type of research and dedication that we put into our products. Of course, you got six different types of carotenoids found in five to 10 different fruits and vegetables. We'll give you that uh, concentration per day. And then also the flavonoids. You know, the most, po the most powerful uh, bioflavonoid in an orange or the most important part of an orange is the peel. Uh, those bioflavonoids that are in the peel of an orange, nobody's eating the peel of the orange. In an avocado, the most important part of an avocado is the seed. So if you actually take the pit, the seed out, and you grind that down on a cheese grater uh, or a mandolin and put that on your salad, now you're going to get more of the nutrients from that avocado. So nobody's eating these things on a daily basis. So we extract uh, these polyphenols, bioflavonoids, uh, uh, all these nutrients uh, from the plant sources and put it into our products. So, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. So let's take a look at that study, uh, that table. So we had vitamin D, E, C, the B vitamins, zinc, iron, selenium, the polyphenols. Well, let's look at the ingredient list of life path. We have vitamin A, we have vitamin C, D, E, B complex. Let's take another look. We have zinc, selenium, polyphenols, and carotenoids. And of course, we have other minerals in there as well. So what was neat was this study looked at these different vitamins, minerals, and carotenoids. And we were also able to correlate that with life pack and the ingredient profile that it has. We have clinical studies, like I said, on all of our products. This is one on LifePack and uh, using the biophotonic scanner. Uh, so we have a baseline reading here of 18,000. That would be equivalent of an F score or in the red. Uh, so you see by the second month, you always already have an increase uh, by, the, by the first month, by the second month, um, uh, almost doubled. Uh, and then... Um, well over and then um, by week 12 the third month you're in that yellow area that c range where now you're you're getting in you're seeing the light you're getting into that blue area uh, but we we find that you know patients need to at least be on this type of therapy for at least three to to, to six months to have a clinical uh, response so in medicine what do you do we evaluate, we recommend, and then we reevaluate, right? So blood pressure, you, you evaluate it, you manage it, and then you reevaluate it. Same with weight, same with cholesterol, same with glucose. We evaluate, we recommend um, vitamin D the same way. As soon as we were able to test it, then we were able to reevaluate it, recommend uh, D, uh, vitamin D to, to boost those levels, which we're seeing substantial uh, no, low numbers of vitamin D. Uh, and now there's a way to measure antioxidants and carotenoids and, and, and have a way to measure nutrition, uh, fruits and vegetable consumption with the biophotonic scanner. So evaluate, uh, recommend a product and then reevaluate. And this is real easy to implement. Uh, it, a lot of physicians while they're taking blood pressure and weight, they take their nutritional score and now they have a log in their chart of where they're at. So measurable results, you take, like I said, a baseline reading, um, make a recommendation two months later, 
uh, physicians retest and they'll see that their score will increase. Uh, it's guaranteed or it's 100% money back for the patient, right? Along with diet and lifestyle changes, you know, it, it'll depend how fast uh, their score increases because, you know, if they're eating Twinkies, uh, you know, they may not, uh, you know, if their diet's filled with Twinkies, they may not be uh, increasing as fast as somebody that's watching their diet a little bit closer. And then you could reevaluate every two months if you wanted to. Um, this is a 10 year study from Yale concluding that this test uh, this device is a true biomarker for diet and potential lifestyle risk for disease. So the longer you stay in that orange and red area, uh, now your chances for disease go way up. We're not going to say you're going to get disease, but your chances are increased substantially versus if you were in the blue area. We have 90 clinical studies on it, um, substantiating the the, the science, so the science is proven, there's no debate on it, uh, all the science is there. Uh, the only debate you would have is if you don't believe nutrition is important for your patient's overall health. So there's a new opportunity to help patients and it takes a group effort, right? Not one person can do it. And so, um, you know, no one is getting optimal nutrition. This was a study done on 22,000 people in uh, USDA. Uh, nobody's getting optimal nutrition. Publication in JAMA that uh, all adults should take a multivitamin. They were saying this back in 2002, right? Uh, CDC said that about 10 years ago, 50% of people are buying supplements. It's actually closer to 80 now. So every three out of four patients that walk into your clinic for the first time are already on pre, pre self prescribing with some type of supplement uh, being proactive with their health. Um, and then it's, uh, it's pretty remarkable how those numbers have increased. Uh, there's no easy way to measure it. It's a broken system. Um, you got ceased and assist letters uh, all the time. Uh, you got recalls, you got lead contamination. In fact, in, in 20, 20, the beginning of 2020, before the pandemic, there was a recall of 1,200 different supplements uh, recalled by the FDA, and that was uh, contamination with lead, mercury, uh, wrong labels, uh, other adulterated product, uh, stating that it's supposed to be something in there and it's not. So, you know, it's a broken system. There's no way to measure it. Your patients are out there. The world's on fire right now. They're scared. They're confused. They're self-prescribing more than ever. And it's up to us, uh, the leaders in health, to understand what they're doing and to provide a better way for them, to buy, provide a way to test, measure, and prove that the products they're taking are actually absorbing and that they're a safe product to take. So we know that supplement industry is increasing. Uh, we're in the wrong business, guys uh, and girls. We should be in the supplement industry. A forty billion, almost a forty billion dollar industry in 2017. Of course, these numbers are past that now, especially with COVID. It's it's looking to increase another twenty to thirty percent this year. Um, you know, they thought by now it'd be at least a trillion dollar market, but uh, I'm sure in our lifetime we'll we'll see that happen pretty quickly. So it's a stable industry and your patients are, are out there um, uh, keeping this industry in business, that's for sure. So we want physicians, we want to do it better. We want the physicians to recommend. Um, we don't want your patients to have to go down the street to the local GNC or vitamin shop and ask for uh, advice from the kid behind the counter, the girl or, or, the, or the boy, 18 years old in college, whatever the case may be, you know, I, I love this, you know, this is what you want. Trust me, I'm the manager. You know, I measured one woman. Um, she said her doctor recommended multivitamins. And so she walked into a nutrition store and she walked right back out. I go, what, what happened? Why didn't you buy anything? She goes, I was too overwhelmed. There's just too many products, too many things to choose from. How do I choose it? There's so many companies. I just walked out. I was overwhelmed. I, I, I want somebody to be able to explain to me properly 
what I should take, why I should take it, and um, what I should expect. And that's why we want to put it back into the physician hands. You know, and, and $40 billion is divided up uh, between, you know, all the physicians out there, about $700,000. So that's, that's a pretty nice chunk of change. You can definitely move the needle up. Uh, those of you that are in regenerative medicine, this is a new technology that we came out with in the last 10 years, uh, looking at gene expression, uh, our age lock technology, the discovery channel was out at the headquarters uh, and, and uh, we purchased life gen technologies uh, for their gene mapping. And so we looked at all the, the genes that cause aging and they express in a certain way. And as we get older, they express in a different way. They basically turn off like the battery in your car. Um, the battery doesn't last forever, right? You have to go to the hardware store, your mechanic and get a new battery. Well, that's what happens with our genes. And that's why we age is those genes never express the same. Well, through technology, through diet and supplementation and, and research, we are able to reset those genes to 92% of the youthful expression. And it's pretty remarkable. The only other way to do that is caloric restriction. I know Dr. Wartel was talking about um, water fasting, but you know, this is the, this is the only other way to do it. Uh, and we have all the science to back it up, double blind placebo studies, uh, looking at the brain um, and gene expression and, and reversing that and, and, and reversing that and cognitive function and turning that back on. Uh, so, you know, gene expression has a lot to do with a lot of the systems in the body. They're all listed here. Um, you know, antioxidant defense, uh, cellular detoxification, DNA, DNA protection and repair, infl inflammatory balance, regulating tissue regeneration, um, and we have studies on uh, tissue with uh, UV exposure, how tissue actually healed itself uh, from sun damage. So that's pretty remarkable. And then also regulating different metabolism body. Uh, at the end of the year, we'll be coming out with a new product that's actually going to reset somebody's uh, metabolism back to when they were 18 years ago. 18 years old again. And I think everybody would agree that they would want to try that product. I know, I know I will be first in line, that's for sure. So we have many other products like this uh, also. Uh, so why, why Pharmanex? Well, uh, it's over a billion dollar uh, business. Uh, it's publicly traded. Uh, we were by Forbes magazine, we were one of the top five in the hundred most we got number five is in the top 100 most trustworthy companies. I mean, who's, who's trustworthy anymore? Uh, we're publicly traded, like I said, uh, over 30 years uh, in business, and they dedicate about $60 million a year on research and development. And that's, that's pretty huge. I mean, uh, developing new products for you and your patients uh, like the epigenetics products, which is, um, uh, they're awesome. They really are. So these are the founders of Pharmanex, uh, three gentlemen uh, that were uh, one way or another involved in the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, Michael Chang worked for Merck. He helped develop the first statin drug. Uh, Joseph Chang, which signed another five-year uh, extension to his contract at Pharmanex. He's the chief scientific officer there. Uh, he worked at Wyeth and helped develop Rapimune, which is still used for organ transplants. And then the late Carl Jurassi, um, he birthed the first birth control pill. Um, I hate to make that joke on somebody that hasn't around, but I um, uh, can't help myself with that one. It just uh, kind of comes out. So he helped with the first developing the first birth control pill. Top of their game. And what they decided was is um, the natural products work much better, have a more better clinical effect than the manipulated pharmaceutical models. So they left their careers, raised $40 million, and they started Pharmanex. So we have a 6S quality process. That's a little play on words there, 6S um, quality process. And it involves these three S, these six S's right here. Selection, sourcing, structure, standardization, safety, and substantiation. Um, selection, <clears throat> they do a lot of research uh, in clinical papers and articles. 
uh, finding the best uh, products, the best molecules to use. Uh, sourcing, they look at uh, environmental conditions, geographic areas, uh, abundance, you know, whether or not it's going to be around to be able to source it. Structure, uh, this is pretty interesting. Like I said, with um, the orange peels, they don't just crush up leaves and stems and put it into a capsule. Uh, they actually extract the active ingredient and that's what they use uh, in their preparations. Standardization is pretty cool. Um, every capsule is the same dose. Unlike compounding where you got the dose spread out in 30 capsules or 20 capsules, each capsule has the same dose. So every day they're gonna get the same dose. And from day one to day 30, whenever that product expires, you know, two years from now, whatever that date is on the product, it's going to be the same potency, the same uh, strength. So there's no degradation over time, which I think is pretty interesting. And then safety, of course, uh, their safe product, their NSF, but they go above and beyond. Uh, I think Australia is the most um, next to our, well, they're, as far as supplements go, um, Australia is the most uh, strict and we go way above uh, their, um, their guidelines. And uh, so, you know, we saw the FDA coming in with good manufacturing processes and, and we, we got ahead of this uh, way before uh, they, they, uh, they implemented anything. And then substantiation, like I said, we have all double blind placebo controlled studies where we wanna make sure there's a clinical effect, right? We wanna make sure that, you know, there's some efficacy there, uh, not some, but it's supposed to do what it's supposed to do, right? It's gonna absorb, the capsules are gonna break down, uh, so all of that is being tested. And I was fortunate enough to be one of the only groups to visit the manufacturing. And they were making gel caps, fish caps, fish uh, oil capsules at the time. And the amount of detail that they put into that, I mean, I was, we were going from start to finish and went to the end and, you know, all these gel caps are coming down on this conveyor belt. And there's a $400,000 piece of equipment at the end of that belt. I said, what is that thing doing? Because while well, it's weighing each capsule, it's, it's measuring it, and it's also taking it through an x-ray. So if there's any calcium in there, any magnesium, anything that might have leaked in, it's, it's going to detect that and kick it out. Every gel cap's the same size. If one's off, it, the machine kicks it out, and everything weighs the same. So it's pretty interesting the amount of detail that they go into uh, their, their production with... Uh, their supplementation. Well, we're backed by, uh, substantiated by a lot of universities. We have some devices at uh, Texas Tech University, uh, also the College of Optometry in New York. A lot of optometrists and ophthalmologists are looking at this device for an accurate way to measure carotenoids for eye health. Um, of course, we talked about the Discovery Channel being out there. Uh, the products are used with the U.S. Olympic team, also NSF certified. We talked about Forbes, and uh, it's the only non-prescription drug in the physician desk reference. So if you look in your desk, physician desk reference, you will see our products. So that is the clinical side of it. Um, now I want to talk about the business side. And uh, if you're thinking about bringing nutrition in or haven't, um, now's the time to do it, not only because of the uh, benefit clinically, it can be, um, but a business side. And I'm going to just shoot it to you straight because I'm a straight shooter. If you don't have a form of passive income coming out into your practice right now, you're missing the boat. You're not optimizing your practice the way it should be. You should be able to walk away from that practice for a couple of days, all right, and still have money coming in. Just like the country shut down last year for two months, nobody made money if they were relying on people coming into their business. But we had physicians that were able to sustain 
their practices for those two months where they were shut down for, you know, whatever case where they were able to, you know, have some passive income coming into the practice where, you know, patients may have been afraid to come in and only came in on emergency. So, you know, the patient count was way down. So, you know, you need to have, the point is you need to have some kind of passive revenue coming in where no matter if you see a patient or not, you have a check coming in. And, you know, practicing medicine is not practicing medicine anymore. And we know that. And that's why the passive income really helps uh, your practice. So two ways of making, uh, bringing revenue into the practice with nutrition, with this device, uh, with the uh, clinical application is uh, the antioxidant screening. This is immediate cash if you choose. Um, most doctors will charge for the scan, the initial scan, and then subsequent ones will be free. They'll be included in the office visit. Or you might just want to blanket and test every patient like you do blood pressure weight. That's totally up to you. But if you wanted some immediate cash in the office, cash flow coming in, you could charge for the scan. It's 20 bucks. You know, people, I know they huff and puff about co-pays and they'll pay a waiter $20 to bring their food to them, which is no value. Uh, where this is a value, $20 is, is the, the best value that they'll get for their money. Um, so you can do that. And then their residual income comes in the supplements. You know, if you have supplements now in your office, uh, that's great, but those are a liability. They're a liability because they're on your shelf until they're sold. Um, you have staff that may over order, may not order enough product, order the wrong product, stuff expires, you have to throw it out. Again, it's active revenue because the patient has to come in to reorder and to purchase those supplements again, unless you have some other you know, shipping system set up. You know, this ships right to the patient's home and you get uh, commissioned on every order that uh, ships out to the patient. So you don't have to remember, oh, does uh, Mr. Jones need to reorder? Oh, he forgot to reorder. Oh, we have to call him now. This daddy has to come back in, reorder. Uh, no, it's going to uh, be a lot easier and a lot less messy trying to keep inventory and, um, and, and you know, get rid of expired product. Plus, you know, this is a retention tool. You know, most patients, they try something for 30 days, they get bored, they don't feel, feel an effect. They don't necessarily have to feel anything for something to work. I mean, you not necessarily feel cancer uh, developing until it's too late or diabetes starting until it's too late. And all of a sudden you have a diagnosis and it came out of nowhere. Well, it didn't. What did you do for the last 10, 20 years to your body? So, you know, this now um, is a retention tool because they see their score increase and they're going to stay on the product. And uh, that's what's nice about it. Uh, so this is going to go over some, uh, you know, immediate, uh, the cash revenue from the immediate side. If you were to charge for the scan, again, you don't have to. $20 is what we see on average. Some places charge less, $10 a scan. Some places in New York charge 50, you know, parking 75 or whatever the case may be. So, you know, average scan is 20. I'm just going to use that number for uh, example purposes here. So if you scan five patients a day, let's say you see 20 patients a day, five patients, you scan out of the 20, you make an extra 24,000 a year. And this is take home, this is cash, right? Uh, now you can build it into programs if you want to do that, get that, but that's all up to you. This is how you want to manage it. You know, 10 patients a day, every five patients you add doubles that up. So this is based on a Monday through Friday. I know some places are open on Saturday for limited hours, but this is uh, uh, five days a week. So, you know, this can substantially move the needle. 48,000 a year can pay someone's salary. Um, so, you know, it, it's definitely uh, some revenue and this, you know, this is, um, uh, something to definitely take a look at. Again, you don't have to charge, but, uh, most, uh, physicians will do, will do it. Um, and then let's take a look at the residual income stream. This is whether or not uh, the patient shows up. So let's say 
you live in an area that's transient, uh, if they go, you know, six months out of the year, like in Florida here, six months out of the year, doctors don't see the patients, you know, so in the summertime, it's slow because they're back up north. Well, if they were on product, now the doctor's making some residual income through that summer months and not taking a hit because his patients have gone up north. Uh, that's just an example. Um, so average practice, you know, has about 3,000, 4,000 patient records. We're only asking for a couple hundred out of that, out of the year. Uh, and you could see that that brings in almost 70 grand to the practice, just a couple hundred patients on product. Not all of them, just a couple hundred. Uh, 400, you know, now gets into substantial numbers. And this is in addition to if you were charging for the scan. So, you know, you can add an extra you know, 20, uh, 24,000 or 48,000 on top of that 120 uh, bringing into the pra uh, practice. And it's a passive uh, indirect form of revenue uh, that um, you you can depend on. And um, a lot of doctors, you know, some doctors have trumped their physician income with this income. They're actually making more with this than actually practicing as a doctor. Uh, and so they retire early uh, because they can. And um, this is a willable, sellable asset. They can pass this on to their wife, their husband, their kids. Uh, this goes on forever until they write a letter saying that they no longer want to receive a check. So it's pretty amazing uh, what can what can happen. And then we talked about the inventory and shipping where you don't have to worry about that. I'm just going to play a video if we have time. I don't know if we uh, if I ask for questions. Any questions, put it in the chat for uh, John here. If you have any questions, you can put it in the chat. I'm just going to play a quick video. Uh, Getting no sound, John. No sound? I don't get it. I haven't. You have to click on share audio. Oh, share audio. Okay. Still nothing? I'm not hearing anything. I can't hear anything, no. Gotcha. It was the people about that now? were having the introduced to the biophotonic scanner yep. yes, we can about hear. a year and a half ago at a physician conference. And there was a physician there actually demonstrating the scanner. And when I initially saw what he was doing, I was incredibly skeptical. I actually walked up to him and I said, gee, what kind of a gimmick do you have here? And he was very professional and he just invited me to place my hand over the scanner and he took my score. And I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. So I asked him to do it again and he gave the same identical score. And then I made him do it again and he didn't clobber me. and he. Yeah, after three times, I had the same score. So I thought, well, that's an interesting little device. At least it has precision. But I was still very skeptical about what it did. And so I just pulled up a chair, and I watched this physician scan dozens of people as they came through the line. Now, one of the things that jumped out to me immediately was the people that were having the highest scores were the people that were thin. They were non-smokers. They were eating lots of fruits and vegetables. And those people that were scoring really low had a lot of chronic diseases, a lot of pro-inflammatory states like type 2 diabetes and so forth. One lady came through with rheumatoid arthritis and she was, gosh, she was hardly detectable. Her score was less than 10,000. So just seeing that as a clinician, it piqued my curiosity. And so I began to do my due diligence. And it took me a long time. And through that process, I learned many things. One is that the scanner is based on 
a Nobel Prize winning technology and that the company that produces the scanner is one that has an exceptional reputation. So I felt very comfortable with the science and that allowed me to start looking at the income model and then I realized that you know this may be something that we want to implement into our practice and so we took that leap of faith and it was really a small one after doing my homework. It was a very positive experience. The very first day that we put the scanner into the practice we had uh, 20 patients were scanned, 19 chose to go on product and it just took off from there so it was a very positive experience from the get-go and uh, since then we've had numerous patients go on the LifePak nanotherapy and many of the other products that PharmaNex offers and one of the enjoyable things has been to watch these people's health improve. Now we start rescanning patients at about six weeks and patients when they initially went on the product asked me am I going to feel better and I said no you're not going to feel better. As a doctor, as a scientist I was very skeptical that anybody would feel better taking a supplement. But when these people came back at that six week interval, they were all telling me how much better they felt. Initially I just thought, well it's placebo, it's placebo. And then I started asking them, well when did you start feeling better? And every one of them said two to three weeks. We asked that question to over a hundred patients. And there was only one that said they felt better the next day. So we knew that was placebo. And that kind of made sense. If you have a nutritional deficiency, then it's going to take a few weeks before your body levels come up to an optimum level. So uh, that was a very strong uh, validation point. And being on the product myself, I also began to experience that as well. So it was uh, a very uh, uh, intriguing thing from a, a clinician's perspective. Um, we have a society that is obese and unfortunately malnourished. And so this program is a way to help our patients take a very proactive step towards prevention, but also to help them feel better. From a more traditional internal medicine standpoint, we've seen people's HDLs improve. We've seen some patients require less antihypertensive medications, and we've seen some patients drop their A1Cs from 0.5 to 1.0 points. And so it's been very uh, effective in that regard. There's a lot of positives to say about this program, and um, one of my biggest concerns was time. I'm extremely busy, probably like yourself, and we have an awful lot going on in our practice, and I was concerned that this program might disrupt patient flow, and I was afraid that it might blow out my staff, and what I found was quite the contrary. It was very easy to implement the program with a staff incentive program that we put in place, uh, the staff actually embraced it in a very positive way. They were very enthusiastic. And so uh, initially we started scanning on just Fridays and uh, the next Monday I came in and my nurse uh, was all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and she said, hey, Dr. Malloy, we've got the scanner up. It's ready to go. If you want to start scanning people, let's do it. So they were very excited and they've been on board ever since. So the time uh, was my main concern. It turned out to just be absolutely nothing. It was exactly the opposite. And the truth of the matter is, is this program has created enough residual financial uh, cash flow into the practice that it's allowed me to have more time as a physician. I was working six, seven days a week. I've been able to cut that back to about four. I'm actually able to spend more time with my patients. I'm very passionate about preventive care. It takes time to do good prevention and to do good lifestyle counseling. And so the scanner program has actually helped me uh, develop more time. The income is uh, very much what they say it is. It's no frills, there's no, um, uh, there's no hidden agendas here. Uh, this company is very straightforward and the income that I'm experiencing right now is beginning to rival my physician income. So I would just encourage anybody who is interested in developing uh, residual income streams into their practice. This is something that's very nice because it exists outside of the third party payer system. You know, one of the things that had a very profound effect on uh, my uh, education and my di due diligence was actually coming out to Provo and seeing the healthcare professional forum, touring the facilities, touring the labs. You know, as you look at this video, think of, you know, trust but verify yourself. It's important to have that personal experience. 
Uh, there really is no substitute for coming out, seeing, touching, meeting some of these scientists and some of the other physicians that are incorporating this program into their practice. The big thing for me, number one, was I did not want to come across as a snake oil salesman. I wanted to offer a pharmaceutical grade product to my patients and it needed to be safe. And that is one of the things that I was able to learn uh, on my trip out to Provo and vi visiting the labs and visiting the headquarters. But also seeing other physicians implementing the program and talking to them about their experience. We don't sell in our clinics, we just simply provide an opportunity for our patients to shop. And 70% of our patients are already on supplements. I think it's very important that physicians offer them some guidance because there's just simply so much noise and false claims in this whole market. So I think it's a very important thing to come here and experience it yourself. I, I think it's important to uh, bring the uh, just a appropriate healthy skepticism but an open mind. You know, just evaluate this like you would anything else in medicine. Um, understand that we finally have a way to offer our patients an objective measurement of nutrition. If we look at somebody's health, it really consists of a table, and that table has four legs. And that first leg is exercise, the second one is emotional well-being, third one adequate rest, and the fourth one is nutrition. Historically, we can really get to those first three legs easily, but we've never had a way to measure objectively and with good science that fourth leg. And this biophotonic scanner is finally a way for us to do that. So it's really uh, something that I think is critical to our patient's health, and I think all physicians should uh, embrace this technology. And the teamwork and the support uh, as far as uh, implementing this program and carrying it out has been superb. Uh, the professionals that uh, work with PharmaNex are uh, top-notch. Uh, the amount of support that you'll get will be unparalleled. You will not be doing this by yourself. Uh, you'll have a team there with you to train you and to train your staff and to hold your hand through this process. So it should not be an intimidating uh, thought at all. All right, well, you know, we're gonna have our next um, private meeting at Provo, Utah uh, on September 30th to October 2nd. It's a Thursday, Friday, well, Thursday evening, uh, Friday all day, and then half a day Saturday. Uh, to come out, do your due diligence, check it out. Don't take my word for it, but meet the scientists, meet the leaders out there, check for yourself, do your due diligence. So if you're interested, I can send you that link. I appreciate the time. I, I hope you found a lot of value in this and um, uh, look forward to, uh, you know, potentially working and being a partner in your patient's care. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, send, us, um, send us the link, we'll put it on our website. And uh, if, you, uh, if it's okay with you, you know, we put all, our, all the videos on, on our website that recorded there. So <clears throat> absolutely. Okay. Um, so, you know, we're able to talk about uh, things we can't talk about in CME credits, like uh, how much is, you know, what, 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 are, what kind of ex out, out expenses there for obtaining one of these uh, units? Yeah. So it's really, it's a minimal investment. It's, it's 34, uh, 3450, $3,450. Um, but that comes with, uh, $2,500 worth of product uh, that the physician and their staff can, can uh, be on a product experience. Comes with unlimited training. It's not one or two days where somebody flies out and trains your staff and they forget the next, uh, the next day. Now it's, it's ongoing training, all the marketing material, uh, 300 scans. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of value in that. And then, um, it's 125 a month for the lease, uh, which is month to month. You can cancel at any time. Uh, 30 days, you don't like the program, uh, you get 100% of your money back when you return it, and you get up to 90% back the first year. So it's really low risk, high reward. I know sometimes I hear you guys talking about $50,000 lasers and pieces of equipment. So you know, for 
hundred dollars basically, and the return that you get, it, it's it's pretty pretty remarkable. You, you mentioned one hundred twenty one hundred fifty scans. Is there a cost per scan after that one fifty or? Yeah. So, that. right. So it's a little less than two dollars a scan. You get fifty scans a month in that lease payment. Oh. Right. So, so if you charge twenty dollars, you're making eighteen dollars a scan. Okay. But you know, some doctors like to just include the scan, and then uh, they try to get as many people's hand on that scanner as possible, uh, and you'll make up. Uh, in in product uh, sales, which you would lose out on the 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 revenue for the scanning portion. Okay, thank you, John. Anybody You're welcome. Else, thank you. Anybody else have any other questions? Um, so uh, I want to thank the you know, new folks who came uh, tonight. Um, I'm going to put down here in the chat. Um, the, we usually have the recordings up. Uh, it usually takes me about 48 hours to get it up because uh, um, uh, we go through our uh, web uh, aosrd.org webinars, all the webinars that, that we, we've done, pretty much all of them since we started, started last November are there, slideshows and recordings. If, you, if you're new, you want to see some of the other work that we've done. Next week, <clears throat> Dr. Patel um, is going to uh, uh, grace us with the principles in environmental medicine. So that's her um, specialty. And it's to improve the understanding about the effects of environmental pollution on human health. So uh, we've got plenty of that. So Dr. Patel, thank you. Um, the week after that, just a little heads up, I'm going to be traveling. So if somebody wants to take the helm, we can, uh, you know, find, have a speaker. If not, um, we're going to, that would be September 21st, we'll be off. And then we'll be back the week after. If somebody wants to um, take the lead on that, I will uh, hand off the, the hosting uh, things to, to them. So uh, there's Dr. Schwartz's, um, uh, info there, phone number, um, uh, if you want to uh, participate in this healthcare uh, forum, September 30th to October 2nd, it's hcaforum.com. It's in, it's again, is in our chat, chat room. Those of you that have any, um, since the OMED is now uh, virtual, um, we just need to uh, do, do the recordings um, um, and um, get them over to Dr. Burgess. Um, I want to say a shout out, one special person, um, we have a guest tonight is Corinne Gale. Um, Corinne, if you could unmute yourself, I see you there. Um, so Corinne is a very special person. She was my, my dance teacher, believe it or not. And then she went on to become a clinical nutritionist herself. And she's going to grace us with a talk sometime in the future. I asked her ne for next week, but apparently it's her birthday. So, <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, my um, hubby trumps that with dinner, so thank you. <laughs> so, 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 uh, so those of you that don't know that I, 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 I won't call myself a ballroom dancer. I, I, I've dabbled in it for it must be about fifteen years now. Um, there was a an ad in the newspaper. Those of you who know my story. So my 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 uh, my my children grew up, moved away. The dog died. My my lovely bride ran off with the uh, the marriage counselor, and. Uh, uh, you know, you live in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania, you need something to do besides go to the gym when you're done working. So, and if you know the, the sort of the ethnic background community, it's, it's an Eastern European. I saw an ad in the newspaper for a salsa lesson. Well, what did I know? You know, I, I knew exactly two, two Hispanic people um, and, uh, but Chili's had opened in our town there. Um, and if you, back then you went, they gave you chips and salsa for free. So I thought we were going to go to a cooking lesson. I was going to learn how to make salsa. And I go there and Corinne was the teacher and uh, no, it was a dance lesson. And I kind of liked it and I've been actually been doing it ever since. So um, she's going on to uh, fame and fortune as a uh, nutritionist now. 
and uh, I'm going to twist her arm uh, to join us and for a, a little bit different perspective. Um, anybody else that wishes uh, would like to, to give us a presentation? We're always looking for, for some new blood, David Kahn. And uh, we'll get Dr. Ortel back here um, sooner or later. And um, so I want to thank you all again for um, participating. We'll be back next week, um, Principles of Environmental Medicine with Dr. Patel. Um, and um, unless anybody has any questions about anything, Dr. Burgess, any, any issues with uh, um, you know, the uh, OMED you need to announce to anybody? So Everything is 100% right now, but would like to ask anyone who feels they would want to present anything either at OMED or National Thing or to this AOSRD, Tahoe Tuesdays, if anybody would like to contribute anything, uh, it's working really well and we want it to grow. So, and we're open. We're trying to establish free speech in medicine. So yeah, they, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't like that. Very That's much. a tough one. That's a tough one. Yeah. So, um, oh, and one last thing. So I, I'll be talking Wednesday with, um, with our folks and we'll be, we're going to be finalizing where our March meeting will, will be. I think it's going to be in Vegas this year. So um, the pros and cons of the, the pros are, It'll be a lot less expensive to get there. Um, the hotels there, are, you know, some of the hotels are actually less than, than Reno. So those of you who don't know, our, our, our program's always been in Reno, like forever and a day. Um, the, the cons are I won't be able to uh, arrange the, the entertainment that, like, that we, all, we all love so much because I don't really know anybody there. <laughs> um, but uh, we'll, get, we'll, we'll do the medical, <clears throat> the medical part of it anyway. So um, well, I'll, we'll give you get you that heads up on that also. So uh, with that, um, I'm going to say good night. I want to thank um, I thank you everybody. Thank John for um, giving that uh, you know presentation. Um, thank everybody, all the new folks. Um, Corinne, thank you for um, I know you came and went. Thank you for for joining us. It's good to hear your voice again, uh, uh, Mr. Hampaw. I know you're out there too. And thanks for listening. And um, some of the new, some of the newcomers. Um, again, please spread the word. We're here every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, and um, you know the more the merrier. And so there again, there's uh, the John's John's um, info in the chat room, and um, if uh, you can either get him or you, uh, I can get it to you also. Um, and if um, anybody has any anything else. Um, Going once, going twice. Okay, we'll see you folks next week. Thank you for everything. And um, again, John, thank you. And good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night.